Hey, thanks for joining me today. I got a great uh, interview for you today. I have Joe Barone on. Uh, he's a New York native, born and raised. Uh, Joe's been in and out of prison many a times. His father was the uh, main guy in the uh, Genovese family. And I'll tell you, it's really a great interview. Yeah, so stay tuned. You're going to like this. Hey, I'm back with my friend, uh, Joe Barone. Uh, Joe, why don't you introduce yourself to my viewers and tell them a little about yourself. Hey, uh, I'm Joe Barone uh, from New York. Uh, it was a little small town called Nerochelle, New York. I was around the uh, Genovese and Bonanno family, also the Lucchese family. Uh, but uh, now I'm somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to say. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Well, well, I, you know, you, you're in like the same situation that I was in when I was a kid. My father was deeply involved. I grew yeah. up with coppers and soldiers all my life around me, like it was the norm. You yeah. know, I know that happened with you too. What was it like your experiences growing up, so and up I, around these people? I'll tell you a story about like my father because he was always actually my father happened to be. Unfortunately, I hate to say this about him, but he'd probably tell you himself if he was alive. Uh, he was a kind of a degenerate gambler. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually taught me, I, I guess I had, when I was a kid, about seven years old, I had about 30 singles and 30 singles when you're seven years old in the seventies was a lot of money for a kid. Yeah. You know? yeah, it was. Uh, I guess I saved it up. You know, people would give me money for my birthdays and everything. You know, you, you don't spend no money, you know, you're a kid. Anyways, uh, I, I, I guess I took it out and I showed him, I got the money. And he said to me, first thing he said to me was, where'd you get that money? I said, I want to, you know, playing cards like my father would say when he came home with money. And uh, he said to me, he said, well, yeah, what were you playing? I said, gin. So he says, okay, let's get the cards. He got the cards. He got the money out and everything. And he played a couple of hands with me. Well, within two, three hands, of course, all the money was gone. Yeah. yeah. He says, uh, so he gave me the things. He goes, oh, you got anything else? I said, no, daddy he goes, okay. He took the money, he took the cards and he got up and walked away from me. So I sat there on the living room floor where we were playing the cards and I went upstairs in my room. Well, about an hour later, I come back downstairs. He says, uh, come here, I want to talk to you. I says, what? You know, I wanted to pretend like I was mad, but it didn't mean nothing to me because I was a kid. Right. So right. He, he hands me the water, the money, and he goes, here. I says, no, nah, I don't want it. He goes, no, no, no. He says, I'm your father. I don't want your money. He says, but nobody in the street will ever give you your money back. He says, never gamble. Right. And to this day, as you can see, I'm, I never gamble. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still remember the story. Uh, is what I'm saying. But uh, I met guys. He was around. He was around a guy from the, uh, I believe it was the Lucchese family back then, a guy named Rudy Pippolo. Uncle Rudy, we used to call him. And uh, he was a captain in the family. And he was actually, my father, when he got arrested, they used to do, they used to sell heroin back in them days. Yeah. And so my father got caught, what they would call the tail end of the French connection. Mm hmm heard of that right oh, yeah. so uh the french connection was big on drugs and all that stuff but my father was like i guess at the tail end of it you know was pretty much dying out or whatever and uh this guy rudy would give me a 50 dollar bill like i said i was a little kid maybe uh, 10 11 years old or whatever uh but i met all these guys like fat mongo these guys are all from the bronx new york now so uh the town i grew in I grew up in had a couple of guys in there but they were more or less stayed in the bronx and that's where we went with like 15 minute drive you know what i mean Mm -hmm. I'm in a drive. So I met a lot of those guys like that. But my father was a hairdresser by trade, but okay. he used to do his own things on the side. He had the, he had the loan shark and he would do, he had the clubs, you know, with the cards and everything. And mm -hmm. then of course he was hijacking trucks when he could. <laughs> I used to see him when I was a kid getting dressed in the, uh, in the, in this old green outfit, like a kind of a one piece jumpsuit. And he yeah. had a black leather jacket on. I said, where are you going? Daddy he said, I got to go to work. I said, what do you do? Daddy goes, I drive a truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you know, he didn't tell you exactly what it was, but I remember him and my my uncle coming over, uh, my uncle coming over to my house, and my father and him, you know, going over the numbers and going over everything and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But uh, I, you know, he really didn't he didn't really didn't introduce me to it as much. I mean, I went to the clubs with him when I was a kid uh, and stuff like that, and so I met a lot of people like that. Yeah, see, uh, my my mother and father were divorced when I was young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My mother. Too. Yeah, my mother moved to East Boston. My father was still in the North End with the wise guys, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I ended up working for the Angelo family. They they ran Boston up there for Patriarca, mm-hmm. and I ended up working in the vendor company. Mm-hmm. And on Saturday, remember the dime machines, the gambling machines yeah. when we were kids? Absolutely. I used to go every Saturday, roll them. I'm oh, 11, okay. Yeah, 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 I'm 11, 12 years old. I'm making 50 bucks a week at tips. Nice. Yeah. That was a yeah. lot of money back then, you know? Yeah. That's and in the, course, in the course of that, I wasn't around my father that much, but going through the North End, East Boston, all these neighborhoods, you know, every, all the wise guys were in the social clubs. Then you remember that. Everybody. Absolutely. Was there. And that's, that's when I was did. really deeply introduced to all of that. Growing right. up. I used to like, I, you know, what it was was you, you see these guys, they show you, they, they, they had the pool table in there and they'd show you how to shoot pool and. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that. And you'd have something to eat with them. They make you say had all kinds of food. Somebody was cooking in the back. And let me taste some. Some of these guys could cook pretty good. Oh, I'm yeah. not going to I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, y- y- you see what it is like. I, I used to walk in. As a matter of fact, there's a book my friend wrote, Larry McShane. And it kind of says a couple of the things. This is a, a chin. The chin. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a. Uh, Life and Crimes of the Mafia Boss, Vincent and Chin. We got a few pages in there uh, my, about my, my father and me. Uh, but you, you see these things going on in the clubs and everything, and they take, they take you. They really take you under the wing. See, what I think, in my personal experience, I'm not sure if it's the same for you because, um, you know, you was actually made. You were a big guy, way bigger than I was. Uh, but they, they make you feel like you got another family. You know what I mean? Like you could go to them because they – Yep. Yeah, these these guys actually. Uh, I hadn't gotten into a fight with a friend of mine. Uh, we had a problem with some some people, so I wanted. I was all dressed up, and I just wanted to get cleaned up. I had a little blood on my face and everything, and uh, I went to the club where my father was, and he seen me, and I just wanted to wash up. He said, "What happened?" And right away, the guys they all get together right away. They're ready to jump in for you to fight, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's a really. Uh, there's no need to go to the rest of the story. It's you know I wound up getting arrested later on, but uh, right. Uh, they, they they make you feel like you're good. Now you remember um, that movie uh, with the Henry Hill and all of that. Uh, yeah, Goodfellas. Yeah, Goodfellas. There was a couple of good lines in there, and I thought that was more significant to what I'm talking about. Do you remember when Henry Hill first got pinched, and then Robert De Niro walked in there and he gives broke him his cherry. Yeah. yeah, he just broke his cherry. But you, when they all were there, you remember when they were all waiting for him, mm-hmm. and they said, "Hey, you know what that does to a kid." Oh, or anybody yeah. else, even a man, to see all his friends there that they, they, they supported him makes you feel like, yeah, I'll do anything for these people. They'll do it for me. Yeah. But, you know, most of them turn out to be, they're really out for themselves, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the whole yeah. life is like that, Joe. I mean, it's yeah. very, you know, it comes down to self preservation who's greedy, who wants this, who wants that. They're all looking right. for power. You know, right. it really comes down to it. It's sad, but when we're growing up and we're around it feels, these people, it makes you feel good. Yeah. It, it I mean, was like a second family. Yeah. And I and, and like even you, your background, you're probably even tougher than me. I, I mean, I wasn't a, considered a real tough guy. They knew I fight. Of course, I defend myself. And there's a few a couple of good people I gave, I guess, good beatings. So maybe I was tougher than what I thought I am. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it, that wasn't my M.O. I wasn't so, so tough. Not, not like yourself or, or even your dad, as you were saying before. Um, but I knew the people and I was trustworthy. Yeah. And of course, I I'm, I I'm wasn't looking to go against anybody. You know, I wasn't in the life so much where, uh, you know, and I made it purposely known that I didn't want to get too close. But unfortunately, you do. Right. Uh, but once you and what I they had, I found out later on as I got into uh, arrested in the 90s and when the FBI and the uh, assistant U.S. attorney came to me. And said about my father being dead. I didn't even know he was dead. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And they said that the wise guys murdered him. And uh, once they did that, it was over for me as far as any respect for them whatsoever. Because of course, 
Yeah. My father actually ran away, Bobby, to avoid prosecution. Don't get me wrong. It was for self-preservation, too, as opposed yeah. to he don't want to go to prison anymore. He did a stint in the 70s in Lewisburg for that, for what I was talking to you about, like the tail end of the French connection. Yeah. He mm-hmm. was supposed to get a lot of times, but that one of the main guys who was his partner wound up getting whacked. So he only wound up getting... Uh, I forget about five years, but then again, back in those days, they only had to do 65% of the time. Yeah, that's right. So he wound up getting like out like in three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't bad for what he was caught, what he was caught with a trunk load of heroin. That's a lot of time, you know, even in the seventies. But uh, all those guys I met up there in Lewisburg, Fat Gigi from the Bronx, he was a big drug dealer. Matter of fact, they said his money was buried in his backyard. So that feds were back there with <laughs> shovels digging up the backyard. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so they, they, go to, they go to any extreme, you know what I mean? Oh, they do. They yeah. Do. But uh, my, my, my personal like experience with it, like I said, I, did I meet some good guys? I, I, of course, I knew Jerry Chili. Yeah, we were. So on my last bit, I was with Jerry Chili. Yeah. And Jerry Chili was one of those guys. Uh, he was actually, uh, if, you, if you remember, probably with the Gus Farachi, he had wound up killing a, a DEA agent or something like that. And of course, he wound up getting whacked because they wanted to get the heat taken off of them because everybody was, you know, wanted him. Mm-hmm. And supposedly Jerry was involved with that because I think his daughter was like in love with the guy or something. But Jerry was one of those kind of guys, really. Uh, matter of fact, one other story might be interesting. You might have heard because supposedly his son got killed. And I heard the chin gave the order to get his son killed. And oh, the I guy believe that. Killed, yeah. Yeah. And the, his, the guy who killed him actually ran away to Italy. And Jerry, you know, of course, nothing happened. But uh, to the guy, obviously. But uh so he, he had some hard times, Jerry, but Jerry was a real party guy, but he was a real, uh, he was a real gangster too. Like, mm-hmm. and, and you know what I'm saying by that. Some guys are the gangsters, but they're, like you said, they're out for themselves. They're there for the, they're there for the, the quick thing or whatever, but some guys are real gangsters, Yeah, you know, like Vinny Gorgeous, who I was around, mm-hmm. Vinny Bastiano, he yeah. was a real gangster, but, but because he was groomed, right? Like mm-hmm. Barney Balamo. Yeah. Okay. Yep. From the Genovese family. He's Mm -hmm. a real gangster. I mean, but he's smart enough to uh, know, like these guys are smart enough to know not just to not don't put all your eggs in one basket. They're not just gangsters, but they're you could say they're an entrepreneur gangster, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I was talking about that on another show. show Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these guys that are running these families could have been Fortune 500 guys without a doubt. No like one realized you, the intelligence of these people. But you and I doing. both know we're victims of our environment. Now, yes. my, my uncle lived up in by Boston. He lived in Beverly. Yep. Up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was my great uncle, actually. He's my grandmother's brother. And uh, but these guys, it's like us, too. We grew up, uh, you know, nobody. Uh, you Maybe we had op- opportunities. I'm not going to say that we didn't, but. Basically, nobody uh, gives you that kind of opportunity. You know, you are who you are because you're around who you are. You know what I mean? That old saying is a cliche, but, you know, tell me, I'll show you, show me who you're around. I'll show you who you are, you know, Uh, unless you're able to break that mold, you know, I mean, the only some people that I know that broke the mold uh, was, you know, uh, other people that I went to, the Jewish kids I went to school with, God bless them. They, they do, they do good because their family took them and showed them the ropes. Well, yeah. your father, my father showed me the ropes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he had come to me a long time ago. I think I saved like a thousand dollars or something like that. I was going to buy a car. And uh, he said to me, so what are you, you can do with that money. I said, Dad, I want to I want to get this car. You know, I was driving around a piece of junk. You know what I mean? Yeah. An old Chevy. I think it was an old Chevy Caprice, a four door. I mean, it had I think it had four different tires on it. I couldn't even go around the corner. Yeah, I, I had the Chevy Apollo 69. Yeah, go there ahead. You go. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was like mine might have been an Apollo. It was a big one, but uh, yeah. uh, I could barely drive it to work. Like, you know, the, it wouldn't even like handle the turns good. But anyway, he says to me, he says, you want to make some money? I said, all right. So then he taught me how to do the loan sharking. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I made money. I was making money, you know, not crazy money because I didn't have that much money to give out. But little by little, I started building up a little bit of a business and it was good. And I was able to get the car I wanted. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that was a big part of my business was loan shot. I think at one point I was bringing in seven, eight thousand a week just on shy. That's nice. 
That's nice. You know, it took me a while. I built it up. And yeah. I mostly had bookmakers. I gave it to all my guys, you know, but uh, right. <laughs> I started small like everybody else. But, you know, I was a big drug dealer up here. Making the a lot of money. Is- they always tell us down here, you know, they always say, because my father, like I said, the, when, my, when Barney came and they want to propose him to be, get straightened out and everything, of course, they said, look, that was the past. This is how this is the, this is the type of guy Barney is. He said, that was your past. And he took mm-hmm. him on the BQE, started walking around with him to talk to him because, you know, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, if you if another car pulls over behind you something's wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you yeah. can find a spot to get pulled over that much, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, so he's, so my father, he said, look, he says, what you did in the past, you're over here with us now, he says, and that's it, you know, so uh, they, for some reason, they frown on the drugs, but then again, if you give them an envelope, they don't really care, well, you know? don't want to know where it came from. E- exactly. I that's mean, if it. anything yeah. happens, they say to the guy right away, wait, you didn't know what he was doing? Yeah. I, I thought he was doing this. He didn't say nothing to me. Mm-hmm. Just bring an envelope every week. What do I care? You know? So, uh, but that's the kind of guy like like Barney was. And uh, basically, my father had the numbers stores, too. He had two of them in Mount Vernon, New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had to go see a guy over there that was pretty big. Um, I, I forget his name. But it might come to me. But he ran the whole town. Yep. And he had to get permission. And then, of course, they worked it out. And mm-hmm. the store was making good money. And mm-hmm. this is, I went into the number store with my father. Now, we just had got robbed like a few nights before. And... Uh, so I thought he was brought me there to watch his back, but he said he he was mad because once the stores got taken away from him, um, and what I mean by that, no wise guy took him away from. Him. They just had to close down because he got pinched, and they didn't want to reopen them again for some reason. Yeah. Um, he said I I took you around to show you, and I, I want to see if you took to it, but you didn't take to it. But then again. He didn't communicate that to me, but that's how that silent thing goes between a father and son. Right? I would have said, "Hey, Dad, let me see what I'm doing." I should have said, and I would have had the number stores, and I would have been earning good money. Then, you know, your the father seemed there. like my father because we were never smart enough or good enough. Yeah, you know. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm buying homes, beautiful cars, and yeah. uh, that kind of pissed him off a little too. My father he was a funny bastard. My father, because <laughs> yeah. he just wanted to be the boss, you know. Yeah. And being the prick son that I was, I just couldn't let him have that. I should have let him have that. I couldn't. You know, so we got, I guess that's that thing. Sometimes we're too prideful ourselves. I was, yeah. And, 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 you know, you don't want to feel that you gave this much an inch or anything. But, Mm -hmm. you know, something in the long run, in the long run, it pays off. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, But basically my life, you know, uh, it was was pretty good. I mean, we we went we had like a roller coaster life. When my father was doing good, of course, we were doing good. When he wasn't doing bad, then we were doing bad too. Oh yeah, it's like anything else. I've been on that roller coaster many a times. Yeah, you know? my father. Uh, hey, when he went away in the seventies, of course, uh, who do you think came to help us? No one. Nobody. No. Uh, once in a while, if my mother had to go to my cousins. Uh, and he, they had their own number stores themselves. She'd go over there and they'd give her money, you yeah. know. And it was almost like she didn't ask for it, but they'd give it to her, you know. My my cousin George and my uh, cousin Pat. He's really I call him my uncle Pat, but he's passed away now too. But he was. Mm-hmm. They gave us money. My grandfather, which was my father's father, didn't give us any money. Yeah. And my father actually bought a three a two family house with a basement apartment, put it under my family's name, my his mother and father's name. And we didn't get no money out of that either. But yet they were going on vacations. Yeah. So you see how yeah. it is? It's no, I know. I know. They forget about you. You know, the yeah. minute you, you're a good guy in the street, but the minute you get pinched, stay away from them, do this, do that. Now, I was with this guy, Sally, uh, South from uh, Brooklyn. Uh, he's actually was uh, he was on this uh, case it was a jewelry heist case. I forget his last name. Uh, 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 Tikio was his last name. And uh, another guy, Mikey Shades. We were to, we were all of us together. Now I was with a guy that was Louis Mena. He was actually a drug dealer, but they used to rob the drug dealers. Him, Tommy Karate, mm-hmm. all those guys. Yeah. Now Tommy Karate was another guy you got to watch. You know, people, yeah. His, yeah. His, his own people were afraid of him. Mm-hmm. That's scary. Yeah. Um, but he, anyways, uh, they were robbing the drug dealers. Tommy Karate would hide in a garbage can to wait for you to come home or in a tree. He, he was crazy. Mm-hmm. 
Louis Mena, they were scared that he was going to testify. Matter of fact, he introduced me to Richie Davis. Richie Davis was with those guys, the, the Gambino guys, and and uh, or the Bonanno guys, whichever one he was from, I forget now. And they, he had a picture of him when he was a hunter. And he used to go out in the woods and shoot and everything. So I was in his cell and everything. And and we talking and everything. And Louis says to me, yeah, he." I said, Dave, what'd you used to do? Because he looked like the nicest guy in the world. Matter of fact, he gave me a Christmas card. He says, and he was getting like, I think, 20 something years. He says, Merry Christmas, $50 redeemable upon my release. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. God. Yeah. So, so I says, what did you do? So. Uh, Louis said he was an accountant. You didn't know that he used to count the fingers, the hands, because <laughs> I don't know, maybe he was chopping them up too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, they, they, all these guys got around him, Louis, because they were afraid he was going to rat. Now I happened to go to the wood shop with him. We were in Otisville, New York. I don't know if you know that place. Oh, I, yeah, I haven't been in there, but I know Otisville. Okay, so I was in Otisville. I was with this guy Porky back in those. He was doing a bid there, and a lot of good guys in there. But we were. Uh, I walked with him from the from the wood shop, and these guys were going to jump. Uh, Louis Bellata, Frankie Smith, who wound up testifying later on, uh, Frank the German, they used to call him, all these big dudes. But for some reason, they didn't jump him because I was there. So he said to me, Louis, you saved my life. I'm gonna, I got a lot of money buried. I'm going to give you a million dollars when I get out. Of course, I never got it. Yeah. And I wasn't doing it for that. But uh, what's his name came to me uh, Tickio, and he said to me, he says, you see what they're doing with this kid? They're threatening him. They're scaring him. He says, you're supposed to pull this guy in. Make yeah. him feel, and they'll know that he's okay. And he's nobody's going to do anything to him. But no. close. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But they don't do that to you. And then they wonder why. Now, don't get me wrong. It, you take an oath. You take a vow. You're not supposed to flip. You're not supposed to cooperate. I right. get it. Mm-hmm. But then you act like I'm an orphan in here now. Yeah. First, I'm the, with the family. And now I'm an orphan. Mm-hmm. He didn't even give me a chance. That's so the worst I, thing you could do is isolate one of these guys. That's the worst thing you could do. Now, my second bid, the one I was in on now with this, this my last charge, my cousin goes to see, he was in the Lucchese, with the, he's an associate of the Lucchese family. And this guy, they call him Joe Bacala. Yeah. Okay. He, he sent, he sent the lawyers, to, believe it or not, from Murray Richmond's office to come see me. And they were going to represent me. But he also sent them there for another reason. He wanted to see if I was doing anything. Yep. They said, we're well, here. Yeah. Yep. They said, yeah. And they asked me a lot of questions. But I was already working with the feds from a long time ago, you know, from since the 90s after they finally told me about my father and everything. Right. Yeah. And uh, there was nothing I could do. I hired George Santangelo, who was a wise guy attorney. I thought I could help myself a little bit, but there was nothing I can do. Mm-hmm. And then finally got out. And the feds made sure it got out. The feds actually put the fact that I was a cooperating informant, you know, in the papers. Right. So yeah. it, it forced, and as they called up the Bureau of Prisons, forced their hand. They do it. They work together anyway. They talk to each other and they do oh, things. Of course. For yeah. And they threw me in the box. There I was 15 months in the hole. Now, I didn't know that it made me get PTSD. I didn't know it was going to damage me like that. I was in the hole before in Otisville for a week. It was okay. Uh, you know, I made it, but you know, so then finally I went to trial. I won. I beat the feds. Matter of fact, you know, the trial, you know how it is to be in court. I won a suppression hearing. Jose Muniz, my attorney and me, we're in the law books now uh, for the fourth amendment for illegal search and seizure, Mm -hmm. okay, which is almost unheard of in the feds. So, you know, uh, God was on my side. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, it wasn't easy. It's actually even harder now because I actually lived in both worlds. For almost yeah. 20 years, I was a confidential informant. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't tell really any of my friends. I told one friend who I thought because I actually, he was actually with me when I was going to make the decision. I talked to him. He was in the visitor room and everything. And I told him after when we got out and everything, uh, my friend Pete, uh, he lives in my town and uh, married to a nice girl. And uh, I told him everything. He knew all along. But his idea of me cooperating was for him to have all his friends arrested that he didn't like anymore. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, wanted, he wanted to reap the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? I'm going to be honest with you, Bobby. I, I think I could talk to you openly. Absolutely. Uh, those wise guys, uh, 
uh, the ones I didn't grow up with, I really didn't, I grew around them, but they were old by the time I really started getting myself involved. Th those, they were none of my friends. Now I knew friends of mine that actually sold drugs, uh, did crimes. Not one of them actually, not one of them in all actuality, all none of them got arrested. Why? Mm -hmm. I didn't talk about my friends. Yeah. Two reasons. One's I will go to jail for my friends. I don't need to worry about that. I I, can, I know how to keep my mouth quiet. I'm probably mm -hmm. going to die with still with a few secrets under my belt. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, sure. Yeah. But the second reason is, too, the FBI didn't want to know nothing about these guys. They all wanted wise guys. That's all they wanted. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. So, but I told my friend Pete, he said to me, he says, oh, Rob got in trouble uh, doing this with the drugs. He says, you know, why don't you? No, that's not, that's not how I operate, you know? Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, they wanted all the murders. Yeah, what? they wanted they wanted to know where the bodies were buried. I actually told them where a few bodies were buried. Uh, my father actually got, uh, they actually thought that my father actually killed this one guy. He was crazy. He actually had crazy, uh, he had papers. So he was legitimate and crazy. Alex mm -hmm. Ciccone. And Alex Ciccone, my father told me exactly how he got killed and everything. And not too many people knew it, you know. So yep. they said, oh, they thought my father killed him, which he had it coming to him 10 times over. Yeah. yeah, you know, this it was a guy in my town, Carmine, Carmine Smash, and he used to use Alex to go around. You know, no matter what, you bring Alex, which he, you know, the guys want to pay because this guy he had pieces of skin taken out because he had bite marks. He had a bite fight with somebody. Yeah, Get out. <laughs> the guy, oh, oh, the guy, yeah, out of his bite. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. That's how he was whacked. He was whacked. Yeah, but he had it coming ten times over. I I don't feel bad for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so. But it was the life was hard. Um, uh, you know, when it came down to they, the, they wanted me to kill this guy, Mikey Mancuso. He's actually the boss of the Bonanno family now. Mikey knows. Mm -hmm. And this guy, Dominic Sicali, my captain, wanted me to kill him. I, I don't know if he even got permission to kill him. He didn't like him anyways. I, I know Dominic. You know Dominic? I did time with him, yeah. Oh, you did time with him. Okay. Yeah. 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 And Dominic, Dominic and I actually, believe it or not, I liked Dominic. He had yeah, a couple of, yeah. yeah, he had a couple of bad things, ways with him, but he, he, I did like him, though. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and there was another guy, Ace, that we liked, too. He was, he was not a bad guy, too, Ace, but he was, he was tough, too. His father was actually in, in the pizza connection back in those days. Mm -hmm. He's doing life. If he's still, he's still alive, you know, I don't know. But uh, so Dominic gave me the green light to because he asked me when we were in the car together, he says, you want this life? Yeah, I said, I, you know, I can't say no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah. And then they wanted me to whack Mikey Nose. And then Mikey Nose, for some reason, liked me. Although when I got arrested and I was with Jerry Chili, he actually wrote a letter to Jerry. Uh, one, of, one of the kids that was in there wrote a letter. And then uh, Mikey Nose wrote a letter saying, watch the kid, watch me. Now, they had no idea what was going on, but yet you see right away, you're no good if you go away. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I didn't have a button, so what are you going to do? But I went to my handler, I went to Vinny, and Vinny gave me the okay to kill him. But he said it to, he said it this way. He said, listen, he says, you know, because, you know, I can't whack the guy by myself. They had to bring some, some Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, he says, you got to protect yourself, Joe. You do whatever you got to do. But the minute it happens, whenever you can get a hold of me, you get a hold of me so we can protect you protect me i'm already i'm already under the gun already what are you gonna yeah. do for me i tell you i just shot the guy you know what are mm -hmm. you gonna say we're gonna let it go we know who did it but you can still go out there and cooperate but we know you you know i i think that they wanted to use even more leverage on me well here, here, let me tell you what happens in those situations of course okay. i you know i was involved in a lot of murders up here mm -hmm. i had some people uh you know had to go away Right. My guys took care of it. They didn't even care what they did. They wanted me because I gave mm -hmm. the order. So yeah. they would use you. They got the yep. Dominic and these other guys. Yes. That's what the feds do. That's what they wanted to do with you.